And I said, guess what? Engagement is off. I said, you will not extort money from me. How right. dare you after I'm putting a roof over everybody's head? Are you going through life blind? This is Eyes Wide Open with Nick Thompson. On this podcast, we share knowledge and stories that build human connection while elevating stigmatized societal issues such as mental health, holistic wellness, culture, free speech, and more. All to ensure we show up in the world with our eyes wide open. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Eyes Wide Open. What an episode this is going to be. I have Stephanie Davison, who you may know from 90 Day Fiance from uh, 2021, where she was engaged to Ryan Carr. And <laughs> I honestly, I don't even, it's wild. And her edit obviously was complete total fabrication. Uh, she has been speaking out openly about this since before the final episodes even aired. She was actually banned from the tell-all episode, uh, so didn't go there and released her own tell-all on her Instagram following the event. Stephanie first reached out to me when we launched the UCAN Foundation uh, to say, I support you. I was sexually assaulted on set. I was having allergic reactions to hundreds of bug bites from the location we were on. Um, and the fact that she and Ryan actually broke their engagement before they picked up filming again after a pause due to COVID. So her story is just, it's just the antithesis of how horrible reality TV production is, how unethical it is, how fake it is, and how they will exploit you, mistreat you, misrepresent you, hold you to physical harm, all so that they can get their storyline. So I, I am grateful for Stephanie being so brave to share her story today, but I hope that this helps all of you do what it does for me and that's view reality TV with your eyes wide open. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Eyes Wide Open. Our guest today is Stephanie Davison. Stephanie is an entrepreneur and the founder of Med Spa Company called Skin Envy. She's an avid animal lover and former cast member from 90 Day Fiance in 2021. Thank you for coming on, Stephanie. How are you today? Good. Thank you for having me, Nick. Good. It's my pleasure. Just a, a little overview for the audience. When I launched um, the UCAN Foundation back in April, Stephanie was, uh, you might have been the first person, one of the first people to reach out to me and say, hey, I had, you know, uh, a horrible, exploitative, uh, very damaging story that you wanted to share. So we'll, we'll get into that. Um, and I think you deserve that platform to talk about all of the experiences you went through, um, you know, from the from the, I mean, you know, this is very hard to talk about, but um, from filming the, the show. So thank you for that. And thank you for coming on. But before we get started, I like to do a little uh, question that's sort of lighthearted. What did you want to be when you were growing up? And how did that change to where you are now? Well, you know what? When I was a little girl, um, my father was a dentist, and he was always a very hard worker. You know how they always make the joke that dentists never work Fridays. My father worked six days a week, Monday through uh, Saturday. So as a little girl, um, I always was up 7 a.m., and uh, wanted to go to the dental office with him. And, you know, whether it be I was emptying, you know, the garbage or whatever he would let me do, I would do. So, you know, as a, as a child, you think your dad's going to never retire and he's going to live forever. Right. <laughs> right. So that's what I thought, you know? Um, but I think that really, um, uh, I, I think that made me always want to be a businesswoman myself. Um, he was, um, always wanting me to, continue to continually go to college. I ended up getting four college degrees, got a master's degree in interdisciplinary technology. And honestly, he wanted me to continue. He wanted me to get a PhD. He wasn't going to pay for that one, of course, <laughs> but he's like, you know, sissy, are you sure? That was his name for me. He said, sissy, are you sure? You know, if you don't go now, you're not going to go, you know, you're not going to go back ever. And I'm like, dad, but I need to start making money. So, right. um, <laughs> 
You're right. So I ended up going into business and, you know, I think he's the one that taught me, you know, you don't want to work for others. You want to work for yourself. So yeah. I ended up starting the two med spas and I've been in it for many years. Good for you. That's awesome. What an inspiration too to get that from your dad, even though you went in a completely different field. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. Before we before we dive into this super deeply, I'm curious, what was your casting process like um, going on 90 Day Fiance? Because you you filmed back in 2021, right? Yep. At the end yeah. of 2020, um, they filmed me here in Grand Rapids because Belize was then shut down because they only have seven ventilators in all of Belize. So we had been casted, but then they sh were shut down. So, wow. yeah. So they had filmed me here about three months prior. Um, just me, just me. And of course me calling Ryan, Ryan 14 times a day. That's how they edited it to make it look like I was calling him. So that's how I became controlling Stephanie, you know, oh my goodness. when in reality I call him one to two times per week, but you know how editing goes. Oh uh, yeah, they can edit whatever they want, and then according to your contracts, you get no no recourse on being completely defamed in in your edit. Unbelievable! Had zero idea. You know the funny thing, Nick. Is I love to read you know comments and things like, especially after you do an interview, and you know they say you guys know exactly what you're getting into. You talk to other reality stars. Are you kidding me? They don't give you other people's numbers until you are 100% completely done with filming. So you have no idea what you're what you're getting into. You know, no, no way did I have any idea what kind of editing that they the process would be that they would make you look like you're dialing, 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 you know, and they would repeat that over and over. No way. And they use the, the same scenes over and over too, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and the people who really want to see the real truth, they'll write that and they'll say, don't you see that? Don't you see that they're playing things over and over? But some people want to see the most negative in a person. You know, I say there's a lot of angry people out there. Go on a reality TV show and then you'll see how many angry people are in the world and um you know people see what they want to see and i'll just leave it at that but no we don't get anybody's phone numbers i promise you that not till the very bitter end like a week before the the show is going to air so we don't get to talk to anybody else and especially people who have appeared in previous episodes no never would they do that or we'd all run like hell one, you know, one of the interesting things, I think I shared this with you when we were talking on the phone the other day, I think I shared with you that my like biggest, grandest takeaway from all of this is that I've realized like how troubled and angry and upset and traumatized people are because of how they talk to people that they think they know because they saw an hour or two of their, you know, life. And I use air quotes for those listening. <laughs> they see an hour or two of your, your life on TV and they think they know everything about you. Right. Nick, I don't know if you saw, but the first time when I finally heard about you and saw you, I immediately got online and wrote that mm. the, what I had heard is after you have completed your entire season, not an episode, but an entire season, what you've seen of the real person is 15 minutes, 15 minutes after the entire of, you know, your 12 or 13 episodes. 15 minutes of, uh, is what you see of the real person. Everything else is fake because from the moment they walk in the door, they're like, you know, let me see your closet. This is what you're going to wear. This is what you're going to say. Not what the executive producer had said on the phone when I said, how many hours a day? Oh, eight, eight to 10. So you're thinking, oh, okay. So, you know, maybe a little bit more than minimum wage. No. You don't get minimum wage far below. So right away, first illegal thing. Second illegal thing is, oh, we're just following you, your regular day-to-day -day life. Boom. Two lies in the first two <laughs> No. 
from every single word. This is what you're going to say. This is the next thing. This is the next thing. You don't get to say, you know, again, maybe, again, 15 minutes in the entire season is, and even people, the thing is, Nick, even people like the Kardashians who are executive producers, Courtney Kardashian came out recently and said, I will film 18 hours a day. I could be laughing all day long. And then, you know, when I'm eating or something and I, and I have a frown on my face, they'll grab that because they want me to be the negative one. So if the Kardashians who are the executive producers they're taking the negative because that's the spin they want Courtney. If they have zero control of the editing, how, Mm -hmm. what are the rest of us that have normal people? Yeah. Normal people. And you know, I think you, you said so many things that we could probably have a podcast on each of those topics. But one of the things that I found incredibly, um, interesting when I was going through the casting process and reading these contracts about how they can edit you and how they're going to, they're going to do all that. I was convinced. I said to myself, I'm like, you know, I have character, I have values. I'm not going to act, you know, outside of my character. So what can they do? And <laughs> I didn't get, I did not by any means get a bad edit, but, um, you know, I have seen and know people who have, and it's just, it is so manipulated out of context and it's just awful because that's not what happened i mean literally when i was done i thought okay you know how could bad could it be i thought if they're going to really show what really happened you know uh, like like a lot of people know i i went out on my um instagram i did an hour long tell tell all because i wasn't invited to the the end the end tell all because they knew i'd be honest yeah that's one of the things i wanted to ask you about is when i saw you you weren't and so full transparency i haven't i don't watch a lot of reality tv especially now um so i i hadn't seen i hadn't seen it but like you know when i first got introduced to you and i was looking at this stuff i'm like what the fuck is going on like just the the stuff you message me and then the stuff you read online it's just so inflammatory it's awful right right so when you when you ended up i I don't really know there's so much to cover i don't really know where to start (laughs) why don't we start by you explaining um what your situation so you were engaged to ryan for the show right ryan carr yes and then you ended up in I don't know if I, we can call it a love triangle, but a love triangle-esque thing. Uh, and this is not, when I say this, this is storyline-wise, not necessarily because we're going to uncover what actually happened. So yes, tell me about your fake storyline with Ryan and how everything with Harris, um, who was his cousin, how that played out in real, or how, maybe how that played out on the show first and then how it played out in real life. When we applied, you know, to be on the show, we we were engaged. And then what happened is COVID hit. I mean, like, boom, like th- three, four weeks later, COVID hit. And, you know, they, they rely on tourism. So I started supporting the family. And that's in Belize, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. And so they have, they don't get like what, what people get here, um, on un- unemployment. Yeah. So, so, you know, his, he had sisters and brothers and his mother and they had no income. So I was paying rent. I was paying cable. I was paying food. I mm. was feeding the family and keeping a roof over their head. And, you know, at first he was appreciative. And then I was, you know, letting him know, yes, they're filming me here and eventually we'll get there. And then, and you know, they, as the saying goes, no good deed goes unpunished. He then started saying, I I want more money. And I'm like, you want more money? He goes, well, yeah, I'd like to have, you know, you, you can't be here for my birthday. And you know, I, I want, I like to have a party and you usually, you know, throw a nice party for me. I'm like, Ryan, there's this year is not party time. I'm I'm paying all all the bills for you and your family to have a roof over your head. And he goes, if you don't send it, start sending me more money, I'm not doing the show. 
And I said, guess what? Engagement is off. I said, you will not extort money from me. How right. dare you after I'm putting a roof over everybody's head? So I said, we're done. So um, I called the executive. I didn't. I'm sorry. I did not call the executive producer. I called the field producer, Vaya. I said, Vaya, I, I, you know, I'm sorry to tell you this, but Ryan and I have broken up. We're not going to be on the show. She goes, Oh yes, you are. I said, Excuse me. She goes, We, Stephanie, we have too much money wrapped up in you. We've been coming to Grand Rapids. We have, you know. 100, 150 hours wrapped up in you. You're doing the show. I said, no, I'm not doing the show. He's extorting me for money. And he goes, she goes, Stephanie, you're paying all their bills anyway. Just send them what he wants. I said, Via, when I do something out of the goodness of my heart, that's one thing. When extortion's involved and I'm being what? Mad, no, I'm oh not sending an F and darn, and I hung up on her. Why don't they foot that bill if they want you to be engaged so bad? It, you know what? And they said, you know, and they had told me that before. They've been taken to court because somewhere, and, and it doesn't surprise me at all, you know, now that things go on, they're not allowed to pay. You know, that's why they only pay the Americans. They don't pay the people on the other right. side. Because then it looks like they're paying to have a TV show. So they've been taken to court before because I guess they got caught paying someone. So they're like, we're not allowed to pay. And I'm like, well, that's okay. I don't want to be married to this guy now. Now he's really showing his true colors. That's so, so horrible. Isn't it though? So, you know, when they were supposed to come, I said, don't come. And they ended up showing and they flew a, a crew of 15 here to take me anyway. And I said, I told you not to come. And they said, we're not leaving. We were told to come anyway. <laughs> what? Yes. This is insane. Were they at your house? They weren't at my house, but they had taken enough. They We had been filming at my house, but they had taken enough like green screen. And so they set up and they had... Um, purchased a, a, a very large banquet room at a hotel about 20 minutes from my home. And they said, this is where we are. We're not leaving. And I said, good, you know, stay there. <laughs> and I turned my you. phone off. But what, you know, what happens then is then when I turn my, my phone off, it then starts ringing to my medical assistant. So what, mm. so then... She started like calling another line of mine and she said, Stephanie, they're like interfering with our business now because they keep calling and calling and calling and they're God. saying, tell Stephanie, we aren't leaving town until she gets here. So this went on until like Wednesday night. They, they started at Monday. It's like seven in the morning. By Wednesday night at nine, I thought, okay. They've had to have left by now, right? They wouldn't be paying this crew because, you know, they pay everybody like oh, a yeah. contractor. So this is hourly yeah. with 15 people. I'm thinking. Well, and, a lot, and a lot of them are unions, so they're going to be paying more for right. the extra work. Exactly. So I thought, okay, I can turn my phone. It's nine o'clock at night, Wednesday. They, they got the hint. Turn my phone on, Nick. Within five minutes, my phone started ringing. Oh, my God. They're all still there. And they said, as we said, we're not leaving. Did they threaten you with any, like, damages or anything? Because I know in the Love is Blind contract, if you leave or pull, you know, pull out or anything without producer's permission, they can um, charge you a 50K fine for damages. Yeah. No, nothing like that. Because I had asked, because I had asked the executive producer, you know, because this is reality tv this is supposed to be you know a real engagement and i had said what would ever happen if we were to break up and they said well then the sh of course the show would be over you know <laughs> and i had asked the ex executive producer that you know because I, I wanted to know every little detail well they and just lie they about everything from mm -hmm. minute one they lie mm -hmm. so 
I was bawling, but at this point, I am like catatonic. I'm like, you know, Pam is already telling me at work that they're disrupting and, you know, she's trying to get all this work done and people are trying to call and schedule and get in and they're just calling, calling, calling. And so I went down there at nine at night, just bawling. And, you know, and a couple of the camera crew, you know, like, you know, just come on, as you had said, this will be great for your business, which I had said, I admit it, you know, because, you know, before they're like, this is going to make you famous. And I'm like, I don't give two shits about being They try famous. to sell that as payment. You're yeah. going to get a lot of followers. You're going to, someone told me you're going to casually make a million dollars a year. Now that was never my motivation for doing it. And I'm, I'm not motivated by money. Um, but <clears throat> you know, it is, it, it, it was just this like, we can do whatever we want to you because you're going to get famous. Right. I know. And I don't know about you, unless you're Bethany Frankel, I don't know any, I don't know anybody making a million bucks or even close for being on a reality show. Yeah, I, I, I can speculate, but I, I have no idea. Yeah. Or, well, you know, I have heard the, like the Beverly Hills or not, Be yeah, Beverly the Hills house, Housewives. The Housewives, they make, yeah. They make 70 grand an episode. So I've heard, I mean, yeah. we make peanuts. What did you make? A thousand bucks an episode, but you could literally work 15, 16 hours a day for three days in a row, be exhausted. And I'll go, how many episodes did we get? Maybe one. We're going to throw most of that away, you know, and that's how they operate. And that's why we didn't even get paid minimum wage. Again, first illegal thing they did besides saying you know, saying that, you know, we're just going to follow you around. It's your day to day life. And then they come in and you don't get to say one thing. You're going to say this. You're going to say that. You're going to say that. You're going to wear this. You're going to do this. You know, call Ryan again. Call Ryan again. You know. Right. And let, let's get to that. But before we I actually want to talk a little bit about the wage thing, because that's one of the things that um Jeremy Hartwell, who's my co-founder of the foundation, he sued um, Kinetic and Netflix with a class action suit for breaking labor laws in California, including wages, and determined that while we were filming, because we were filming 18 to 20 hours a day when we were in the pods, uh, which is where you, you meet, um, that equated to about $7.14 an hour, which is below and already incredibly below minimum wage. So that seems to be pretty systemic until you do get to the, the housewife status, right? Where you can make demands and people are actually watching for you, not the concept. And what do you think? So here's what I hear from people all the time that obviously just don't know what they're talking about, but they say, you're not working. This isn't work. <laughs> what? <laughs> And for me, I'm like, actually, anytime you're you're doing something for somebody else to make money, you're working. Right. I mean, that's like, I think that's technically like the, the National Labor Relations Board's definition of it. Right, exactly. I mean, when someone is telling you what to do every second, every minute, when I am saying to them, I need to use the restroom and you're, you're told no, um, Go put this outfit on. You have 15 minutes. Um, it's time now to eat. They set a timer. Go. And then when it goes off, you're done. Um, oh what else do you call it? Besides possibly, you know. I Imprisonment. Mean, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I mean, literally, Nick, there were, when I was sitting there um, at, at the table, when I did end up flying to Belize, because they went first after, yeah. you know, after they came and, you know, I did film bawling my eyes out. And then they drove me to a Western Union and said, now we're going to film you going to the Western Union, sending him money because we want to show you how you spend him money. And I said, not on your life. You, yeah. can, you guys can stay here an effing month and you won't know because I'm not sending him another dime. I said, right. and you guys are all going to get your ass on a plane, fly to Belize first, and see if he's, and if he's not. Because I said, and now I'm also calling Harris, who happens to be his cousin, and say, listen, if he doesn't, because he's told me he's not going to film. 
So right. let's go ahead and have a plan that you're going to step in because he's told me no. So they flew. Were first. they not going to force him to do it like they were forcing you to do it by stalking you? <laughs> well, see, but well, see, they didn't even. Well, I guess he did sign a contract, but they did end up pretty much forcing him because they all came. They went to his house, knocked on the door, you know, a huge group. But he was so enamored by the lights and the, you know, he had never seen such a thing. And so, you know, they're like, come on now, let's. Let's go and let's go down to your local store. And then so they called me like, oh, you know, he's he's cooperating. He loves you. And I'm like, of course he does. You know, he has never seen anything like it. You know, he owns a $10 bicycle. Of course he's enamored by all the lights and all the, the pampering. And the you Hollywood. Can... Of course. And you know, that was probably part of the manipulation of him too. I'm sure they knew that they could kind of glamorize this a little bit for him and convince him to come back on. Right. But I still called Harris. I still called and told him the whole story. I said, listen, he's trying to bribe me for money. I still don't know if I get there, if he's going to go, listen, hand over some more money or I walk off set. So I said to Harris, get ready. Because if that happens, you know, because, you know, you have to pay your own way. They don't pay shit for you to go there. So I had to still, you know, fly. Wait, you had to pay for your own flight? Oh, absolutely I did. Then we missed the flight because I had a cameraman. And then the New York people had forgotten some equipment. So they, so they had sent it. And then when you have camera equipment in Flying International, it's not two hours, it's three hours. So we missed a flight. So I then had to buy another flight, which they never reimbursed me for. It was so much stuff. It was ridiculous. So I got, we got there, like it ended up being like two days late because of that camera equipment and everything. But yeah, so I, I, I had- I'm just like, I don't, I can't believe that they, they also extorted money from you. Oh, absolutely. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so I got there. And so they're coaching me, Nick. So we fly in and they're like, remember, you used to love this guy. Remember, remember. So when you get off the plane, run into his arms, have a huge smile. You used to love this guy. And I'm thinking, I hate this man now like I've never hated anyone. And I have to run and you know, and he has these balloons and I love you. And, and I'm thinking, you know, of course, all, you know. Right. Did you know at this point that they were just setting you up or, or were you just so, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but. Yeah. I mean, well, at this point, everything is fake. And, and here I'm thinking, this is reality TV and this is all fake now. We've broken up, you know. And I'm flying there because if not, they're going to sit here and stalk me in Grand Rapids, you know, and they're just like, this is going to be great for your business. This is, you told us, you know, you don't want to be famous, so they can't throw that in my face anymore, but this is going to be great for your business, you know, so it's, it's all fake. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, when, you know. When is Ryan going to say, give me money, give me money? And at that point, I'm going to, you know, bring well, that would have been real. Yeah, that would have been a real moment to right. have. <laughs> right. And, and at one time, at one point, when when we were alone, I said, you know, thank you for not trying to con me for more money. He goes, let's don't talk about that. Let's just don't talk about that. Well, of course, see, by now he's all into all the, you know, let's reshoot this and let's reshoot that. And he just thought all this was great. Because yeah. we're staying in this place that, you know, they're paying for. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. It was probably like a $2,500 a night place. He's, you know, he's just, he's just overwhelmed. And, you know, they're paying for meals and, you know, everything else. And, you know, it, at this point, he's just loving it. They want that. They want, and they, they, pro it wouldn't surprise me if they told him like, oh, don't bring the money thing up. Cause they, they are, I, I spoke recently to a, 
um, a producer. And this producer said that they actually already have like your storyline planned out from the very beginning. And they're just, they're just cramming people like the square peg in the round hole, cramming people into it, not stopping until they break it and get, and it gets in there. And, you know, I, I think back to my, my experience and, and I, in retrospect, I felt it was the same way. I felt like they had, and you know, you triggered this in my head. I hadn't thought about this before, but I wasn't interested in getting famous. Like I, you know, I, ironically, I was voted most likely to be famous in junior high, but that was because I was going to be a, a WWE wrestler, filmmaker, or president. No. And so the, like <laughs> all of those things are like, not really me. Maybe you could argue, you know, when I wanted to be a pro wrestler, but those things aren't me. They're like about my ideas. Right. And so I, I remember telling him, like, I don't have any interest in famous. I really hate dating right now. It's terrible. And I, you know, I feel like I've been ready to get married and I just haven't had the opportunity to find the right person. So they, aside from the one casual comment from a guy that, that was like a wrangler saying, oh, you'll casually make a million dollars. They never talked about that stuff to me. It was always about like, she could be over there. You know, if you say no at this point to, to marriage, like it's going to be really hard to recover. And you know, they just give you this bullshit it feels like they know you so much better than you think they do and they just know how to feed into these little things on on each individual and what matters to them right yeah it's it it is such a scam from from the word go it really is it is yeah. it is so then you ended up in a I'm going to say storyline because I'm not going to call it a relationship or anything with Harris. Like how the heck did that all happen? Well, the second night I was there, they set up a romantic dinner with Ryan and I on the beach and this horrendous storm blew in and like bugs galore were like, biting my head, my face, my arms, my legs, my feet. And I'm like, you guys, I am in such pain. Please, you know, I need, you know, I need to leave the set. Plus, again, you know, this is a little maybe TMI, but they had not given me enough of a break to go use the restroom. And so I said that to them. I said, you know what, unless you want me to go right on set right now, you need to let me go, you know, and use the restroom. And plus, I am in so much pain from these bites. And I'm like, Stephanie, we, you are the last couple. There are people that are already married. There's one that already has a baby. There's a Fed, FedEx truck waiting every night, you know, waiting for the footage and to be flown. No, we don't have time, you know, and I'm like, to and go to the bathroom while you're being assaulted by a swarm yeah. of bugs, they don't yeah. have time. Exactly, exactly. So they're like, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. Two and a half hours later, then they let us go. And, and so I am like in such pain, it is absolutely absurd. Now, did you have, a, did you have allergic reactions or anything? Oh God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I yeah. woke up the next day, my head was like a pumpkin and my, my eyes were almost completely swollen shut and I had hundreds of welts and they had to call the doctor. And he said, if you get bitten one more time, this could be dangerous. I mean, they have leishmaniasis over there. There's this other one that's called like, it's like chicken garufala or whatever. They're both deadly. And they said, if you have that, you could die. Some of the things can, can lie dormant in your system oh and in, you can end up dead even as much as two years later. So actually, you know, not to get off subject, but when I flew home, I had to be, you know, taken to the hospital and hooked to IV bags several times because I was so swollen, I could barely walk. And they, they were testing me for all kinds of things. They're like, oh, my God, because if it is that, again, you're, you're risking death now. And I would, I would lie in bed and just bawl because of the, the pain. They said it's, it's like we have to just give you all these bags of things because it's, it's almost it's, – it's emulating like a, a severe arthritis. And that's what these two diseases do. And then I called over there you know, to ask somebody I knew. And they said, yeah, a, a doctor – 
over here got that. And I said, and how did he end up? They said, he died. I'm like, oh, Lord, this is great. And all while you're being forced to film. Yes. And again, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. Well, that led to, because they're like, can't you just put a little extra makeup on? Uh, in what? Make my head shrink down and make my eyes come open? No, I should have been in the hospital. And that's why, again, and then they had given me some antihistamines and some other things. And then again, I mean, I literally... Like it, I could barely keep my eyes open and they wanted me to keep filming. Hence then it came, then there was the, the headlines were, and you know, the trolls, look, she can't keep her eyes open. She has to be on drugs. She's got to be on, they decided for some reason it had to be Xanax and, um, be, a drunk. That's those, what they had decided it was. It, and I mean, and, and that them is the trolls for those, yeah, oh, yeah. like it because they make these decisions and then just run with it. Exactly, exactly. But you know, and then you know, some of the reputable, um, like In Touch Weekly, you know, and Cineblend, Cinema Blend, you know, mm. they, they, you know, they actually, actually look into the, you know, and they're like, wait a minute here, but she wasn't like that at all in Michigan. So how could it be that if she was acting totally cognizant and everything was fine in Michigan, yet she gets there and then all of a sudden, you know, she develops a Xanax addiction. It, right. <laughs> it, it, bingo. Exactly. And, and she said herself, she was bitten many, many times. She's had to go to the doctor, but of course they left that out. You know, of course it's a reality show and they're supposed to show everything, but no, no, they didn't show me, you know, with, you know, hundreds of bites. And, you know, you could see, my goodness, you know, everybody's like, oh, she can't keep, keep her eyes open. Well, if you if you look close enough, I mean, they were like swollen. I mean, literally like swollen. Like it was it was an absolute nightmare. Well, that same night, again, they had, of course, it's kind of like the bachelorette. They had Ryan and I, of course, sleeping, you know, because they were hoping they were praying because they had and already planned out the second. Oh, yeah. They wanted he and I to make up because they had already said, you know, this is a great storyline. So, you know, we're hoping to get you guys back on the next season. They had it all planned out for the next season. And it's a it's a great storyline that's not grounded in any reality. He and I had broken up because I had found out he had been cheating on me. So one night I grabbed So his extorting phone. money and cheating. Yes. Yeah, so he had been cheating even before. I had I I shouldn't have even been engaged to him because I found that out even prior to the engagement. Mm. So, so you know sorry. I knew better. Even the first time my brother met him, because he and I were flying over there all the time, um, you know, at Christmas. I'd always spend a month every Christmas um, since 2016. My brother and I always thought we'd buy homes there and retire because they had you know great tax incentives at one point. And the first time my brother met him, he looked at me and he goes. That would never work. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how our family knows better sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> like, just so matter of fact and just looked at me one time and said that and, like, walked away. And I'm like, yeah, he's, you know, he's the critical thinker of the bunch, you know. <laughs> and I always wanted my brother to watch reality TV with me. I'm like, come on, watch it. You know, not necessarily that show. But just right. other shows along the way in life, I always like, come on, watch this with me. And he would always just look at me and he would say, do you realize the editing that goes into these shows, Stephanie? And honest to God, I never had thought of that in my entire life. I had never mm -hmm. thought of that. But my brother is a physician and happens to be what's called an immeasurable genius. That means his IQ is over 200. There's only a handful in the world. And of oh, course, wow. you know. I should have known to listen to him, but you know, I didn't want to, you know, like a, a lot of most people out there. No, no, you don't want the truth. You want to see what you, you know, you want to see what you want to see. Like most of those people out there, I was that person at one time. I didn't want my brother telling me the facts, 
you know, go away. And but no, he used to tell me all that all the time. Stephanie, the editing that goes in it, this is all bullshit. So he wouldn't watch TV with me. And I was always so upset with him that he would tell me these things. He was right all right. along. He did not want me to do this show. He said, absolutely, you're not going to do a show like this. I was going to ask you that. No, he was so against this show from day one, it wasn't even funny. So I know it's edited, right? I knew. I didn't watch reality TV, really, but I knew it was edited. But you still don't know the impacts of that until you actually live it and then watch it back. That's the that's the real game changer is... <clears throat> and people, you signed up for it. Well, I would love to see you sign up for a show, go on a show, watch it back and be completely misrepresented and see if you feel like you signed up for that. Right. Here's the thing, Nick. I have only watched the first four episodes I was on. It mm. got to be once I watched, I was so shocked. I was like, I'm not watching any more of this. This is so like convoluted, I am not watching anymore. So I've only watched four. Now, of course, I have friends that want to fill me in on on how bad it got, but I will never, ever watch the, the rest. And you shouldn't because you're just gaslighting yourself. And, right. and you start to you start to like question your own experience and your own reality. And, you know, I actually just posted a reel recently, actually not related to this, but kind of applies to this is, don't let somebody else, whether that's people in your life, whether that's a spouse, a partner, a friend, trolls on the internet, don't let anybody else tell you what your experience is like because only you know. Right. And I think that that's something that is really hard to do when when the show comes out and everybody's got an opinion. And it it's double bad when you're on a relationship show because then they've got an opinion of you, your spouse, and your relationship. And it's just it's just so troubling to to see so many people have so many opinions based on an edited show i i always say it now i'm like this should be called reality entertainment or should right. say based on actual events just like right. they do in dramatizations of of movies and stuff because this is not real right. it is just not real they they need to get rid of the word reality because reality it's the exact opposite of yeah. reality a hundred percent yeah. I mean, if if people really, especially in my case where they, you know, I say we are done, I am so sorry, but I'm not going to be on the show. And they go, oh, yes, you are. You know, mm -hmm. yes, you are. We have too much money wrapped up in you. And then they come and harass me and yeah. and won't leave. I mean, I what what portion of that is reality? I didn't even know that until you said that. Now I am like shocked. There yeah. was <clears throat> there was one point where Danielle and I. Um, so she had a. I can't remember if I told you this. You didn't watch, right? You didn't watch Love Is Blind. No, I've never okay. watched Love Is Blind. No, to I, I really totally hate, fair. I hate all reality shows. Now, to tell you the truth, I mean, I'm I've learned a lesson from my brother. It took a, a little bit longer than I had expected, but <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. Um, but tell me, I'm sorry. Tell me about you and tell me about you and. Your yeah, so we had weird COVID protocols because we were filming in 2021 in the spring. And there was a whole scene where she she got sick to her stomach in Mexico, which happens to a lot of people. And because that was a COVID symptom, they told her that she couldn't film the couple's reveal party, which is the first time all the couples get together and see each other um, once you get engaged. So she was told she couldn't go. We decided with a lot of pressure from producers that I would go for a little bit just to represent us. A lot of everyone knows she's sick and then go back. And I go back after two, three hours, probably I go back and unbeknownst to me, they, they tell me at the door of the hotel room, they say, okay, go in there, sit on the end of the bed with Danielle and talk to her about the couple's real party, but make sure you stay close to her because she's not miked. And I was like, okay, I didn't think anything of it. And so I go in there and a little bit into the conversation, she's just like short, upset, clearly shaken about something. And by the way, we had only known each other in real life for 
two days at this point. And, and maybe a total of 14 days, right? So then I find out she has a, she had a panic attack while we were there. They, the producers went there, no psychologist, mental health professional, anything there. And they were trying to mic her. She didn't want to be mic. She didn't want to film. She wanted to go home. And they didn't tell me about that and just sent me in there to film. And then how could we film her and have producers there and have camera folks there if she is possibly contagious with COVID and can't go? I, I mean, it just, it made no sense whatsoever. And they edited that into this like scene that like I watched back and I'm like, that definitely didn't happen that way. Cause they made it look like she was mad at me for going to the party and talking to a girl. And the girl that I was talking to was like my, my holder or wrangler, the person who was like taking me to my hotel, to the set, you know, all that stuff. And so it was just like edited together to make her look like she was this jealous, angry person in the scene. And the reality of it was that she had a panic attack. She wasn't in any condition to be filming and they were forcing her to, and they didn't tell me about it because they wanted to create this explosive environment. And finally, you know, I took the microphone off. I threw it at the producers or in the pool, one or the other. Uh, I don't know where it landed and said, we're done and we're leaving. And they did like all hands on deck. Every producer, the executive producer, they all came over to try and convince us to stay. And they they eventually did. But, um, you know, it was just so like awful for her to, for me and for us too, right? Because that's a, when someone has a, you know, an anxiety or or has a panic attack that takes like TLC like that takes time it takes love it takes understanding and it's not as important as filming a scene for a reality show it's in their eyes in their eyes it's like what it so it's just and it's just all so fake and like you said earlier you're you're told where you're going you're told what you're doing you're told what you're talking about you're told what you're not talking about and you are not really given much autonomy to make any other decisions yes that is so yeah. true i mean it's it's a lie again like i said it's a lie from the get-go and i mean it's again it's so funny when they've been talking about this writer's strike they're like Hey, the only people that don't have any protection are reality TV um, people. Yeah. So you're going to be seeing a lot of reality t TV, you know, shows. Yeah. Well, that right there tells you something. I mean, that's a big, that's a big, you know, red flag right there. We need protection because everybody should have something. But that basic just, human rights, labor protections, exactly. Like Exactly. It, it's not a job. Whoever said that is a complete moron that it's not a job. I mean, we're, we're, we're treated. I mean, again, just we're treated like dirt. I mean, when you're told when you can eat, when you can go to the bathroom or not go to the bathroom, when you are bitten so many times that your life is truly in jeopardy. And I have page upon page upon page against you know, different doctors who said, you know, we are truly worried. We have to now, you know, keep an eye on her because some things like leishmaniasis can lie dormant in the body and then just shut down organs and you can die. I mean, so that is something I had to worry about, you know, for a long period of time. And I was in pain, like, like literally, like I would get up in the middle of the night and could barely walk. And I was oh like, just God, ball. So sorry. So it was like physical and emotional pain, you know, for, for, for months, for absolute months. And then to have people turn on me, I'm a control freak. I control with my money because I call Ryan 14 times a day and I'm like, what? And again, since I only watched the first four shows, you know, God knows what, how else they, they portrayed me, you know, right. but Right. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I, again, it's like, I know, I know what my experience was, but then I hear how people were just edited into a villain, uh, like just, it's, yeah. and, and stories told that just aren't even true. Like who comes, who edits this stuff? I want to talk to someone who edits reality TV. If you're out there and you're listening and you want to talk, reach out to me, send me a DM because I like, who does that? So Two other things I wanted to get to. One, 
you and we kind of have touched on it. You and Harrison, did they force that or, or was that genuine or? No, I mean, I was the one that, that forced it because what happened was, so they had, you know, we had, we and uh, Ryan and I actually were in this in the same room, and um, you know, again, it, at first it was kind of contentious, but then it was like, okay, hey, we're here, we're at this romantic thing. We've 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 done this song and dance for four years. I had just because I wanted it to be funny, and I had been, you know, I had caught him cheating. I did after. I knew to get back at him. Harris had flirted with me constantly, constantly. Mm. He has a, everybody on, you know, social media says he has a wife. He's never been married. He has had three children with a woman named Emma. Now I've sent them a computer. I've given those kids gifts. I buy Emma clothes. I've bought Harris clothes. I've always been close with them because it's Harrison, um, Harris and Ryan are like second cousins. So I've always been close with him. He'd call me eight times a day right in front of Ryan. So, but, and then he and Emma were off and on constantly, never married, never married, never married. But everybody on social media says, oh, they're married. She tried to steal his wife. No. They'll find any reason. I, I did read that too. Yeah, never married, never married. They're off and on constantly, live in different homes, sometimes live together, sometimes one of those things. So one time I I grabbed his phone, saw he was with somebody else. This is way before reality TV, okay? So kicked him out. I was upset. Harris called per usual, told him what happened. And he says, can I come over and see you? So he came Mm -hmm. over. And, and yes, we, you know, we, we did have sex. So I couldn't wait to tell Ryan. Um, so I called Ryan's sister and said, make sure he gets this picture. So he knew mm. the whole, he knew the whole time on the show, it was portrayed that I held this big secret. Hell no. I couldn't wait for Danica, Ryan's sister I said, you make sure he gets this picture. It was a picture of Ryan. They showed it on TV. It was a picture of um, Harris in bed like that. Again, we were broken up. I found the thing. I kicked his ass out, you know. And so I couldn't wait for Danica to show the picture, you know, Mm -hmm. of of him. So anyway, after that, though, you know, again, like I continued to help Emma, his, you know, baby mama, back and forth. And all the kids got new clothes for me all the time. Emma got a computer so she could finish college, all of that. Um, But, and and Harris and I remained friends. I even had said to him, if I can get you over here to get a work visa, I would help you since you have three kids that you've now brought into this world and you don't have two nickels to rub together. I would help you. I thought of him as a friend. So anyway, um, Basically, then I then reached out to him and said, if if something happens with Ryan and I, which which happened, what happened then Mm -hmm. is I was sexually assaulted by Ryan, called him. I I told the producers they had, you know, him taken off. This was on set. This was on set. Yes. So I had (sighs) called Harris. He came and filled in for for the rest of the show. Yes. So I am so sorry that you were yeah. sexually assaulted on set. <laughs> Here's the I'm thing. So people said, well, that. why didn't you turn him in? If you'd see what the prison conditions are, because Ryan's father spent many years in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, he had taken me by there before. I mean, it looks like something not, not fit for, for cattle you know it's 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 terrible and and the stories that i hear are are worse than what i hear about the prison system here you know um you know he's you i i just you know ryan's mother who who i'm going to say this i i like her but she has seven children by six fathers 
Mm. Ryan wasn't raised with, if you're not raised, I'm just going to say a blanket statement. If, yeah. if someone's not raised with certain someone to look up to and that, do you, do you know yeah. where I'm going with that? Like a role model. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's psychology based too. Like it, so much ma matters when you're a kid, like attachment styles, your environment, the behaviors you learn. Like if you don't have a good role model displaying the right things, you're going to, you're going to be damaged. Thank you. Yes, exactly. So, you know, when somebody doesn't have that, do you want to send them? Because Belize law is 10 years in prison for that. <sighs> Um, you know, do you want to send someone who, who has no, who has had no role models, um, because they've never been taught not to know any better, you know, right. does, right. does he, you know, I, you know. that, yeah, that, is, that's a interesting moral dilemma that you found yourself in there that there is like no right or wrong answer for and you could only navigate that the best way you you felt in the moment right exactly exactly you know now sharp entertainment that's a different story you know and and i have found out you know because i still vacillate with that one um the thing with with them is they you know of course the contract contract you sign is sharp entertainment is in new york so you have to sue in new york so you have mm, to find yep. a new york attorney or someone that has the yes. reciprocity agreement with them so and that it, there isn't a statute of limitations because i did look into that because at first i was like oh i'm going and then i'm like you know uh, you know life happens and then you think well there's no statute of limitations so it's it's so it's nothing that the can yeah do you plan or think about suing for that or? Oh, absolutely. I do. Yeah. I mean, because again, that's going to haunt me the rest of my life, mm -hmm. the way they portrayed me, the way mm -hmm. they portrayed me, um, is, is unbelievable. I mean, the people that I meet and I'll go, wow, you yeah. know, I'm so glad I got to meet you. And then here's the funny thing. I get so many DMs from people from other countries that they'll say, you know what? I have never met someone with a bigger heart than you. I would love to meet you in person. And this isn't just men, no. it's women too. So it is so funny to me that other countries, they see, even with those guys trying to manipulate and edit, but they saw that I was taking care of the family in in their greatest time of need. And they yeah. saw that. They saw through the bullshit of the editing. You know, and I get I even get, you know, a lot of people here in the um in the in the US as well. Um, you know, I mean I even I I did tell, you know, my father was bipolar, you know, so it wasn't a a, a great, you know, uh, the childhood, you know, my father right. and I, it wasn't all roses. And so I told that, um, on, on air and, um, I had a woman write me and said, you know what? I had a similar circumstance. I chose to not do anything with my life because of that. I use it as an excuse after mm -hmm. watching you on 90 day fiance. I now, because you became so successful you didn't let it hinder you. I've now gone back to college because of you. So when I hear shit like that and people say, if you had to do it all over again, Stephanie, would you? And I'm like, you know what? How can I say no when someone says, I've gone back to college because of right. you? I sat with a girl that was a fan of the show. Twenty, She was 22 and got cancer and then she died at 27. She'd have... She had me come sit by her bedside. Did she want to hear about 90 day? Absolutely not. But she'd say, Stephanie, I'm scared to die. And so I would tell her my feelings and my beliefs, how I think the the soul remains, the body goes away, yeah. but the soul will always be here. And she would have me come and speak for hours and just sit with her. And right before she died, I got a text that said, Stephanie, I love you and you'll never know how much you've impacted my life. 
Would I have ever met Morgan without being on that show? No. So when people ask that, I'm like, you know what? I went through hell and back, but the people that write and say, I went back to college or Morgan saying I impacted her life or other people that say, you know what, Stephanie, I got out of an abusive relationship after I saw mm-hmm. that you wouldn't put up with shit from Ryan. I've gotten so many women that have written me that said that. So how can I say, um, uh, you know, if I could take it back, I would, uh, you know, yeah. if I've changed one person's life because of the bullshit I went through, I'm not going to say that I'd take it all back. You know, I, I go back and forth on that too. And let me, every time, cause they ask you that every time, right? Especially if you have anything negative going on, I get asked that almost all the time. And I'm always kind of like, you know, it's, it's to be determined, right? Like I've had a really tough like year, like two years. I've had a really tough two years. And I, you know, the, every time I've thought I was at rock bottom, like I find out that there's a, there's a, a floor beneath me <laughs> that I can, that I can still go to and mess it. Like I li- every time I'm like, I don't want to do the, you can foundation anymore, or I don't want to keep re talking about all of this stuff that is gone wrong in my life. Or I don't, I don't want to keep talking about, you know, how I, my mental health's been impacted by all this. Like it's hard to talk, but then it, every time I think I'm like, I can't do it. Someone says something that really hits home. Like there was a, I, I, I'll never forget this guy. I don't even know. I, I don't even remember his name, but I remember it was in January here in Chicago and I stopped to read the menu of a cafe that donates uh, proceeds to uh, mental health facilities in, in Chicago, I believe it was. And this guy walked by and stopped and like froze and then ended up coming back and saying, Hey, are you Nick? And I was like, yes. And he's like, thank you for talking about the things you talk about. I have always felt like I have depression and have anxiety. And as a, a man, like, I don't feel like I can talk about it. And you make me feel more confident to talk about it. And I just remember thinking like, oh, geez. And you know, what's funny is I was that. I never talked about it until a few years ago. I hid it. I hid it from everyone. And when you hear those stories, or I had a lovely um, follower friend, I think it was yesterday or two days ago. I wrote a, I wrote a guided journal um, as I was going through my horrific breakup, layoff, couple month divorce experience. Um, And, you know, I was like, I got to start journaling. I got to start practicing gratitude. Someone sent me, so it goes for two months, but there's a tracker. So in the back, you track how you're feeling at the end of every week. And she sent me a picture of her tracker. And she's like, hey, I just want to let you know, look at how much I've improved just sticking to this for the last two months. And her overall happiness, satisfaction with herself, like she's working on her procrastination. And she just shared that with me. And she's like, thank you so much. And I'm like, man, like I'm just, why, how could I not feel the way you feel where it's like, you're actually helping people. And granted, it's at your own demise in some cases, but how can you, how can you be contributing to the betterment and the help of other people? And then there's other people that are doing that for me too, who maybe have had difficult times. So it is, I think that is a very satisfying um, way to look at it. I also think it's a very optimistic and positive way to look at it because no matter what happens to people on these shows, like you're still a human being, but there are other human beings. And then the last thing I'll say, I'll shut up, but the, the, what this shows in my opinion that there doesn't have reality TV can pre- can help people, and if you can produce it ethically, and you can see like the real story of Stephanie not s- staying with you know a guy who's mistreating her or abusing her or assaulting her, and that gives someone else power. Or I use the example for me like imagine how helpful it would have been if we had a therapist on set 
that was first and foremost evaluating Danielle. That's my my ex. Evaluating Danielle before making her film to make sure that they can come to agreement that she's ready to continue filming. But then imagine us having a couples counselor, a couples therapist there to help us navigate how to how to her to communicate to me, me to know what she needs for me in that moment, as opposed to just an explosive, chaotic edit job. You know what I mean? Like that could help people. People could, we could normalize couples counseling. We could normalize, you know, anxiety and panic attacks. And we could normalize, you know, the, the struggles that a person who, who's, who's going, what they're going through or, or the impacts it has in their relationship and how they navigate it. I think that's super helpful. And you can actually m contribute to society instead of bringing people down. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Ugh. So, well, we've, we've talked for a while here and I want to be, I know you've given me more time than I asked for. So you've been very, very, um, I'm very appreciative of that. But what I wanted to, to ask you one, one last quick question, what is your advice, let's say, or last word, I guess we can say on what you want to say to someone who's considering a reality show, who's been on it. It hasn't aired, has gotten a bad at it. Any kind of advice or thoughts that you want to share with people that are, are maybe thinking, well, this won't happen to me. <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, I would just say of the people that I've spoken with, most people aren't happy. I mean, they mm -hmm. really aren't. And even the ones again, I'm looking, I'm, and I'm speaking really from the people that, you know, that are on 90 day fiance. I mean, yeah. once in a while, I'll, I'll just go look at the ones that are continuing on and 99% of their comments that they get are negative. And I'm like, what does that do to their psyche? I, what I did, Nick, is once I went on, I turned my comments off. Only the people I follow can comment to this day it's the same you know once in a while there's going to be a troll that's you know sneaks into your dm so what you know if, you, if i start seeing something derogatory right away i just de delete it you know don't even read the whole i start story. i've started reporting them for harassment too right exactly <laughs> i know they're at least help you know they're at least like cracking down on that you, you can report and you know block mm. and all you know all of that but they they need to do more. They really do because, you know, I just don't know these people that continue on and do show after show and 99% of, of their comments are negative. It's like, what is that doing to their mental health? Oh, it's, tra it's trashing it. I've talked to people that have done multiple shows, but what it does is it gets you like into the eco, it gets you into the ecosystem and it's how you then make money and every, the more famous you get, the more money you make on the next show. And then the next show, and then you, you get all that negative, but then you get another 50 K hundred K followers. And I was actually, um, so Shane was a gentleman that was on my season. He got engaged, went to the altar. They did not get married. He went on another show. And I just remember when he came back, uh, or not when he, well, we got together when he came back and we got together the, the day, the, sh the, right around the time the show came out back in February and we were sitting, having a, we had a couple beers, some food and a couple of tequila shots. And we were just watching his followers. He went up like 50,000 followers while we were there for three hours. And so that, and then, so what does that mean? Now he says, he says he's not doing any more shows, but like, that's what the dopamine hit makes people think, oh, I can get more and more and more, more and more famous, make more and more money, get more and more exposure. And I do think it's, it's, and I've talked to so many people how devastating this is to their mental health. And I just think it's, it's creating this like traumatized group of people who are all trauma bonding with each other and trauma bonding with producers and production companies. And, and it's just, it's just like a whole ecosystem of, of trauma in my, in my estimation, I actually would love someone to do. I think there's enough reality stars now that some psychologist or, or, um, so what I'm looking for institution, Harvard, whatever, to do like a big 
scale on the impacts of the mental health of all of us as a collective. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause it has to be, it has to be terrible. And really, um, I know one girl in particular that did 90 days. She doesn't do it anymore. And she has like 900,000 followers. And she said to me, I'm not making any more money. Having a lot of followers on Instagram doesn't make you any money. No. So it really doesn't. I mean, you could s sell yourself out for brand partnerships if you wanted to make money right when your show came out. But I think Pete and I think the public has this idea that every follower you like get a dollar for. So, you know, you've got a couple hundred dollars. I, and I'm not saying they literally think that. I think that's kind of like the subconscious of it because I don't know if you, if you've seen it, but like I recently in one sentence of a 30 minute interview mentioned how much trouble I'm having getting a job. And it's just, it just turned into this shit storm of people attacking me and saying, I don't want to work. I'm trying to be an influencer. And it's like, no, I actually do want to work. I liked my job before I liked my career. And, um, so I, but people just think like they, they don't understand that it's different when you're, when you're in the public eye to go get a job. First of all, right. I've had multiple HR interviews. Some went pretty poorly where they're like, we, you know, we're not comfortable taking a risk with someone who could be in front of customers and they'll know who you are. And if there's negative headlines or negative stories, like we don't want our company associated with that. Like that's happened to me a few times in, in some way or another, but there's never like a job interview that I go past the first couple interviews where I don't have to talk to HR about what this actually looks like. And so people don't think that, and I opted not to sell a whole bunch of, of brand deals of things that I, you know, unless I, the handful that I've done, it's something that I use. It's something that I believe in or something they gave me. And I tried it before mentioning it. And I, and there's plenty of things I tried and said, no, plenty of things I just said no to off the bat. And I just think people in their head have it that Instagram followers equates to money. And it just doesn't unless you really want to go and, and, you know, sell a bunch of products. And a lot of the things that you're offered are, is like kind of like crappy jewelry and, and stuff right. like that. And it doesn't, you know, it's, it's not going to benefit you if you, you know, you put something like that out there and it's in it and, and it's crappy. Oh. So That's exactly it. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's not it it's not as great as is what is what people perceive it to be, you know, and we don't know what we're getting into. We're not given phone numbers, you know. That's it's hilarious to me the perception of what people think. And again, they have it in their minds and again, there's so many angry people that just want to come after you and attack you and you knew this and you knew that and you want us to feel sorry for you. I don't give a shit if I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. I don't give a shit. It's just like you know what? Take it for what it's worth. If you want to be educated, open your mind. Yeah. Bingo. If or you open your eyes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if not, go go be a troll, you know, go back and, you know, go back on the keyboard and Well, and that's it's a mirror. It's a reflection of them. It's not a reflection of you or a reflection of me. That is so true. That is so yeah. true. And again, but there are so many angry people that Literally, and it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's reality stars or who it is out there. There's just angry people waiting to for to pounce, and it's sad. It's just so sad that there that that the world has come to that. And I I just hope we see eventually we see a change of some sort because too. you know life is too short to be that angry. I agree. Honest to God, like we talked about some very sensitive stuff today. So thank you so much for agreeing to come on. And I appreciate that, you know, we, we got a chance to, to talk about your experience as awful and horrific as it is. Um, I, for what it's worth, and it's probably not worth that much. Like I'm proud of you for surviving it, not letting it beat you and finding some element of good and positivity in it all, even after everything you went through. So Thank you for, for sharing that. But um, before we go, is there, I'd like to give guests an opportunity to ask me anything. So is there anything you wanted to ask me before we head out? Yeah, I mean, just 
how's the foundation going? I mean, is it is it building? Is yeah. So we we have accomplished so much so quickly, and we have um, we have applied for and have we haven't received it yet but our 5013c status which take it's the government has to issue that we meet all of the qualifications uh, but that means that every donation is tax deductible and that means we can get fiscal sponsorship so once we actually get that and we we pay to have it expedited because we do have potential um you know big big um big fiscal sponsors so that's going to be huge for us because then we can actually operationalize because right now it's just a handful of people volunteering their time and spending our own money to to keep um, to make this together. But we've put together, um, I, it's got to be around 100 at this point, reality cast members into the network. We have over 400 therapists that have joined our network. Uh, wow. We're probably around 30 or 40 uh, entertainment lawyers across the country that have joined our network. Um, we have we have been able to invest in a pretty exciting document that's by the time this airs might actually be out, but it, we had a lawyer review some of the contracts and they put together a guide of what's enforceable legally and what's not in those wow. contracts. So I think that's going to be a huge, huge weight off of the shoulders of a lot of cast members when they find out that, hey, like, there's actually legal protections for you that this contract tries to get you to sign away, but they can't legally make you sign away. So lots of stuff like that. Um, I think what's going to be really big for us is getting more people to speak out and feel comfortable speaking out quietly. Like I said, we've had about a hundred cast members between Jeremy and I that have reached out from various shows. That's cooking shows, competition shows, dating shows, you name it, globally, across the entire world, and it's all the same. Um, but I think the biggest challenge we face is there's still that element of, one, I'm afraid to speak up because I don't want to get sued. And then, two, there's still a little bit of some people, I think, who have monetized it and don't want to bite the hand that feeds them um, or is going on other shows and et cetera, et cetera. And then... I think we all need to find a way to put aside our fame, put aside our platform, our follower count, and not worry about extending your platform to someone and actually just come together collectively as unscripted cast members so that we can actually organize and get ourselves some rights and get ourselves some protection. So I think those are kind of the three barriers that we're working to overcome. And I, I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later. That's fabulous. Well, yeah. I commend you for starting this and this will Thank this you. will be phenomenal if, you know, if we have the same rights as as everyone else. That could change yeah. the face of reality TV, which, <laughs> you know, and which all this, of it. Yeah. yeah. This this need this needed to happen. It really yeah. it really did. I mean, the, Someone the stories had to do out there it. are horrific. So, yeah. I again yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom <laughs> of my heart. It's for all of us. It's for all of us who have survived it. And it's for those who have yet to come. So we yeah. can do this if we come together. So where can people find you on your social media, your business? Yep. Yep. Um, I'm, I don't do much with social media again. Sometimes it's like if you, you know, if you lie, if you kind of lie low, you know, you kind of stay under the radar, but you know, if anybody else wants to talk, if anything that they've, if they've been on a show and they w want to talk to me about it or, you know, and then, you know, I know, and if I they the want to know how to know, get a hold of you or whatever, they can always DM me. I'm more than happy to talk about it um, or anything like that, like what I've been through and they want to talk to me personally about something they've been through. I'm always more than happy to talk about um, anything with anyone. That's good to know. I was actually going to ask you that when we were done filming, um, because we do get people that are, co that come and they want to talk. Like I talked to someone from love is blind or that signed the contract on love is blind last week. And then like two days later saw a whole bunch of stories about basically me and was like, Oh my God, what the hell did I sign up for? And so there's people that reach out. So we do get people that reach out about, um, 90 day fiance too. So if possible, if we could share, 
your info or, or your Instagram with them or set up a, a call from the foundation. Um, oh, that would be absolutely. Great. Uh, spe- yeah. Especially 90 day fiance, because again, <laughs> I don't know many people that are happy again, unless they're, you know, on more shows and they're getting a few more bucks. It's, it's not a lot, yeah. let me tell you, but you know, for some, a few more bucks is a few more bucks, but the one, you know, but yeah, any t- any time, Nick, anything I can thank do, let, please let me know. That's great. Thank you so much. Well, thanks again for coming on today. All the links to your business, your socials will all be in the description so people can just click and click and follow, click and message, click and book an appointment with you. Okay. <laughs> it sounds is. good. Awesome. Thank you so all much. Right. All right. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Eyes Wide Open. If you enjoy the show, the best way to support us is by sharing or dropping a review. For more information and content, check out engagewithnick.com or find me on Instagram at nthompson513. Don't go through life blind. Do the work so you can show up in the world with your eyes wide open.